sea. Pull up in motor cash. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Welcome to the 23rd episode of the Jack's Wax Podcast. My name is Jared Miner. I'm here with Todd Isaac, as usual, and we have a very special guest, Mr. Billy Hoskinson with Street Racing Channel. What's up, dude? Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. We I'm little, excited about this one. Yeah, we wanted to do something a little bit different. You know, we're always talking about car care products. Obviously, that's the business we're in, but we wanted to have, uh, we also want to have guests in the future of different genre things that we're uh, a part of. And we couldn't think of anybody better because you've got this crazy platform that we're going to talk about your whole story and, and uh, everything that you got going on. But we got a bunch of questions. Yeah. We were sitting here around here talking the other day and we, we were wanting to start getting a schedule of guests to come on the show. And we was like, there's no better one to start with uh this new season off with yeah and i'm only like 20 billy. minutes away yeah, yeah. that's what made that it worked nice. out real nice it's always easier when it's someone that's close because you don't have to worry, worry about travel yeah. so literally we were sitting there talking about it and i texted you he's like hey you game for a podcast he's like yeah i'm in yeah it's awesome my dad and your dad are friends oh yeah he used to street race back Good in friends. the day yeah. Oh, yeah for a long time ago there's that connection there and and i just want to start right off with uh one, you are 24 years old. Yeah, 24. Yep. And you started racing when? I started racing at age nine. Yeah. So my dad put me in junior dragsters, mm -hmm. and I went through that whole process. It was a painful process. I actually crashed the first time out. Really? Your, fir your first race quit. on the track? I almost quit right then. <laughs> at nine? At nine years old. I I went to National Trail Raceway, as you guys know, right off Route 40 here, just east of Columbus and it was my first time i went out there on friday night to test and the shutdown they had us go all the way to the end and make the turn off so i was like all right we got plenty of room to shut down i can just look around and not have to worry yeah you know <laughs> just having fun and then the next day they put us at the first turn off and they didn't tell me and i'm just looking around i'm nine years old in the shutdown just kind of i mean they're junior dragsters they only go like 40 miles an hour so to get to the shutdown we're pretty much in it to the quarter you yeah. know yeah or else we're gonna be there all day yeah so I, I stayed in it to about the quarter and i'm looking around and i see this dude jump out in front of me and he's waving his arms like wanting me to turn off right here like it's the end of the world and i'm like what do i do i don't want to hit the guy so i go right <laughs> to avoid him and then i kind of overcorrect and go left and it ended up on its side against the wall <laughs> oh no <laughs> second and, day in racing yeah I, I was like dad i think the throttle stuck it ain't stuck i was just <laughs> i was just being dumb he's lollygagging he's <laughs> yeah. looking up there well, those cars are meant to go straight and i have to avoid people right the front the front wheels are like two inches wide and you didn't even wreck it like actually during the race no, it was, it after was the the shut down. yeah <laughs> my son's 13 and he's talked about a junior dragster for a long yeah. time right we just never really pulled the trigger on it but i don't even know you know it's 13 too late to get into that a junior no, absolutely not no uh a lot of kids start 13 14 uh i think they race up to age 18 and then they, they cap it off car. they're like you need to get out like, Dude, you, gotta you, get gotta get a, you gotta get a real car <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a real car now okay yeah yeah dude's got a mortgage <laughs> and he's, yeah. and he's <laughs> over the beer drinking beer in the pits <laughs> oh, that's, that's real stuff <laughs> <laughs> they got uh they got the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. They go to Bristol every year. We used to do that, and there were some some literal man childs getting in and out of them cars. I don't think they they had. They're basically a full size dragster, just short. You yeah. know what I mean? To yeah. fit these kids in there. You yeah. move up to a big car yeah. at some point. Yeah, it's You're time done. to go. My dad and I have talked about that, about getting my son into it. Because he's, he's anything automotive, anything like that. He's Anything he's with waiting. wheels, really. Anything, yeah, with anything with wheels. He's, he's all in. And we just haven't we just haven't pulled the trigger on it. But, man, because I, I know, like, once once we go down that road, it's it's the rest of his life. Because he's going to go into a big car, and, yeah. gonna, and it's a whole thing, you know. And he gets it's into extremely it. extremely expensive. He, he, oh, he'll get super into it's it, too. It's more expensive than a big car. Yeah, sure. you not those little engines. You're spending four or five grand on yeah. one of those little engines. Then the clutch, the tires, the maintenance, ch oil changing every week. Like it's expensive. Yeah, and we uh, we literally we came really close. And like you know, he's got to, at that time he's a little bit younger. He's like you really got to be committed because we're not going to spend all this money for you to just 
kind of like it yeah. and then right. not want to get into it, I don't think that would be the case. I think you'd be all in. You know, yeah. we, we know at that point, at some point, we're... The worst thing you can do is force your kid into it. Yeah. They'll never want to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. got to do it on their own. They got to want to do it. For sure. So you got, you started, you started Junior Dragsters yep. and you were racing um, at a young age. Your dad always raced. Mm -hmm. And then explain a little bit of how it became, how you got into um, starting sh Street Racing Channel. Yeah. Well, I watched my dad race his Nova growing up, and he was always a bracket racer. And that was all I ever knew. I didn't know other than watching the Fast and Furious. Yeah. That was, like, the craziest stuff I had watched. You know what I mean? Like, right. I didn't think it existed, honestly. Yeah. I and think then, that's how all of us thought. You I, know, yeah. me growing up, I would watch Fast and Furious, and I'm like, oh, man, where are they doing this at? You right. know, this is cool. That's yeah. kind of what, what intrigued me. And then I started watching 1320 video in high school. You know, uh, on my phone, I'd be in class just watching street racing. I'd watch Beater Bomb, uh, watch uh, Murder Nova, and I'd watch Big Chief, you know, yeah. doing cash days out in Texas. And it really intrigued me. I wanted to get into it because I was just used to bracket racing. And bracket racing, it's not first to the finish line. Everybody dials in, mm -hmm. and it's it's just different. <laughs> Which it's hard like, for people to understand. It is hard. It, even for me, I grew up around racing mostly circle track. My dad always raced um, late models. But even when I started really getting into drag racing, going out with your dad uh, to the track, I didn't really understand. I was like, so wait a minute. you yeah, One guy got, starts way the before the line first, but he lost. Yeah, I was like, but well, yeah. this guy gets to start way before. I was like, that's yeah. not, to me, that didn't seem yep. racing as to where in drag racing is pretty common. I struggled with it. I wasn't the best bracket racer, um, but it, it did teach me a lot of things. It taught me a lot of the mental game and how to uh, do well under pressure. Mm -hmm. um, it taught me how to be consistent staging the car. Uh, it taught me a lot of good things, a lot of good techniques that I applied to street racing and no prep racing. But uh, I was definitely just intrigued by the whole street racing thing. And in high school, I kind of was getting in a little bit of trouble. I was partying a lot. And my dad uh, bought me this S10 one day. Yeah. And he's like, hey, we're going to build this. It'd be a little project. And, you know, we'll take it out on Wednesday nights to National Trails and race it. And, you know, it'll be fun. So you could drive it to school. And I was like, all right, I'm in. So a couple of years went by. We had a bunch of parts gathered up, and it took it took a little while for us to get started on it. But once we started on it, you know, it kind of got me away from the party in a little bit, and it got me in the garage. Spark, yeah. Sparked a different interest. Your dad could probably see writing on the wall and said, I'm going to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that racing community is like a really good community to be a part of, like, uh, you know, especially – at what you, what your dad's always raced and stuff like that. I mean, that's why we wanted my son to be a part of it because yeah. it's a it's a big family type and it gives atmosphere. you and it gives you that uh, as a kid, especially you know, young kid, it gives you that thing. I, this is something I'm doing. Like you're you're honed in on. Yeah. I don't want to be out partying because I'm fixing my truck. Well, if yeah. you're competitive, you know, my son's really competitive. I'm sure, obviously, you're very competitive. Yeah, if you want to do really good at it, right? You know? And I mean, we've talked about it. like you want to you want to race. Got to get good grades. You got to do yeah. it. You got to do that. It's a privilege to be able to do it. Right. So you were you were how you were in high school, but how old when your dad bought the S ten? I was fifteen years old, and I started driving it illegally. Yeah. <laughs> before I even had a license, I was trying to race it with a V six in it. <laughs> like I would, I think my first race, I raced a Toyota Yaris. One of my buddies, we, we yeah. were playing basketball in front of my friend's house, and uh, he's like, "I bet that Yaris could beat your S 10 I'm like. Nah. Yeah, like no your way, Your four-cylinder is not beating my V6. Yeah. So we went out in front of the house, and we lined up, and he left in reverse. I'll never forget that. <laughs> like, I don't know how he left in reverse, but oh. I, I look back, and he was in reverse, and I was like, yep, he lost, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was it terrible. Matter, doesn't matter what it has in if you're in reverse. <laughs> it's not going to work out wow. too well. That was like my first street race. And, I mean, eventually we ended up putting the V8 in it, we put a little 350 small block in it out of an old Suburban. Yeah, and uh, you know, put Jags aluminum heads on it. We went and I think we bought every part that Jags sells, every little knockoff Jags part. Yeah, just a, as cheap as can be, put it together, and we blew it up in the garage the first night. We we uh, started hitting it with nitrous through the motor, like banging <laughs> it through the motor, and it broke the stock dish piston the first night. And I we were so happy, you know, it was running, it was good, it sounded great, and my dad. 
like you could just hear it it was <laughs> something went through the engine yeah and i was like damn we gotta tear it all back apart already we yeah. got it out of the driveway <laughs> we never yeah. moved it out of the garage <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible but i think after that we put a 383 in it and then a 400 and the engine just kept getting bigger and bigger and adding more nitrous and uh eventually i raced uh, a buddy from school he had a subaru sti so on. were you still driving it to yeah. school and stuff at this time yeah 16 yeah. 17 so i raced my buddy and he beat me in a subaru and it was an old 400 it was tired another engine out of an old truck and we were just hit, hitting it with a 200 shot and this cat he beat me pretty bad and i was like that's never gonna happen again yeah i'm gonna fix yeah. that never gonna be get beat by an import again yeah so we went and we got we built a nice motor finally you know we we didn't want to spend another you know five hundred dollars on a junk mo- junkyard motor and get beat right so we we started building some nicer motors and it started getting faster breaking more parts and eventually we just broke all the parts out of it that were you know uh we ended up with a pretty nice piece yeah so you're so you you're just going to school racing a little bit here and there are you taking that truck out to like national oh, trail yeah. to to races like that as far yeah. as bracket racing yeah we were still bracket racing it a little bit up until i was about 18 mm-hmm. i'd take it out and i think we were running like 660s 650s with it i was running pro class yeah just foot breaking it it was a turbo 400 uh 400 small block and it was a pretty reliable motor for a while and eventually we split the 400 block uh started getting water in the cylinder hydro hydro locked it and then finally we we're like all right let's build an aftermarket block so we got a speedmaster block mm-hmm. they're out of like australia i think yeah and uh probably the cheapest aftermarket block you could do build it put it on nitrous and i think we were running 590s with it we that was the first motor we got in the fives with what kind of mile an hour in the eighth at 590 it was like 117 yeah and at the mm-hmm. time i thought that was just crazy it didn't have a cage in it or nothing and yeah. we, you know we were getting kicked out of trails so we had to go to like the smaller tracks and uh we started street racing it and we started doing really really well with it so when you when you start to go street racing and i ask because like i don't i don't really know myself a lot of stuff in the street racing world when you and you say, okay, I want to start street racing. You just find people that are having these events or. Honestly, I started uh, just watching the videos and I knew some of the local guys that were doing it. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of started asking them like, you know, where do I, you know, how do I find out about these races? Cause I didn't know at all. And uh, eventually this guy named Tim got a hold of me and he's like, Hey, we're doing a race out here in uh, Southern Ohio. And if you want to come out, come out. I think they were just trying to take my money, honestly, because they're yeah. like this bracket yeah, racer. You know, he blood. knows nothing yeah. about it. Let's get his money down here. <laughs> I went out there the first night, and me and Dad went out, and we had been testing a lot. Yeah, you know, we had it. We pretty much had it together. Um, we went out there the first night, and I think we only lost one race out of like six. Yeah, and uh, it was the only race we lost was uh, on a technicality. I jumped. Yeah. So we went out there the first night and we made a big impression. Yeah. Guys that have been racing for years, you know. Right. And they're like, all right, this guy's for How real. How old were you then? I was like 17. Yeah. So they're like, oh, man, this they kid's going to be busting around. Mm-hmm. They thought yeah. I had, a, I think it was a 400 small block at the time, and I had the nitrous on the horn button. You couldn't even see a nitrous button in the car like <laughs> it was on the horn i used to have to leave with one hand on the steering wheel and grab the nitrous with my thumb i would leave and then hit the nitrous like yeah. right after it rolled back on the tire <laughs> sometimes the horn button wouldn't come on i'd have to punch it a couple times <laughs> so so back then at your very first race what kind of money are is that are those races going for it was all grudge racing that night and i, I don't think we raced for more than three or four hundred dollars it was all hundred two hundred dollars you know yeah. let's run it back for a hundred you yeah. know yeah. just fun just guys getting together like nine ten second cars right so what was the moment i guess was there a moment that made you start street racing channel or was there a moment in where throughout now you're drag racing you're starting to do some more street stuff yeah. was there a moment to where you're like this was the moment that kind of propelled you into more of the street racing lane well basically i pretty much knew i wanted to i was pretty heavily in, involved in the street racing by the time i was 18 
and I knew I wanted to start something, but I didn't know what. I didn't know what to call it. Right. I didn't know what direction I wanted to take with it. But one night we got a call, and it was from some guy that knew Daddy Dave. Yeah. Uh, somebody that had raced with him before. And I guess he was in Ohio picking up a dually or something. He was getting, like, a dually with bags or something put on it at some custom shop. And they were down in Dayton. We got a call, and they was like, hey, do you want to race Daddy Dave tonight? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like that? He's and, on Street Outlaw. Like, why is yeah, he in Ohio? And, You're and just in messing the, with me. They want me to drive all the way to Dayton, and I'm going to get there, and they're going to be like, ha, ha, you got punked right. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Ashton Kutcher jumps out. <laughs> yeah. And my dad was super skeptical about it. Meanwhile, it's it's like November, and it's there's mm. it's snowing where we're at. Like, yeah. It's trying to snow. It's like 35 degrees, cold. I'm loading on the trailer and it's like raining, freezing. Like, there's no, no way we're ideal racing tonight. Racing conditions. Yeah, I'm like, there's no way. And my dad's like, "You're an idiot. Like, what are we doing? You know, we get about 30 minutes away and it's still snowing, still raining. We're like, all right, 10 minutes away, it's clear. Yeah, just dry. Everything, you know, the roads are perfect. <laughs> like. Like, this is, how did this happen? Like, yeah. This is so weird. Wait a minute. <laughs> we, we pull up to a Walmart parking lot. Sure enough, Daddy Dave gets out of the truck. And for people that don't know, that in the drag racing world, street racing world, Daddy Dave's big. Uh, oh, he's like one of the biggest street racers of all time. Yeah. You know, he's very well known. Yeah, definitely. Um, he gets out of the truck, and he's just cool as can be. I'm like, this is this real life? Like, this is really happening? And we... We get out and we talk for a while and we're like, all right, we'll just drive around until we find find a nice spot and we'll just block off traffic and hit it off. So uh, we drove around for about 30 minutes and the roads were still a little bit damp. You know, we were trying to find a really dry spot and it was sprinkling just a little, you know. So we're like, man, where are we going to do this at? We're driving and there's a church fire off the side of the road and all the cops are there we're like hmm. we better hit it off soon we <laughs> yeah. went out on the highway because we knew all the cops were at this big ass church fire yeah and we just stopped traffic right on the highway and we hit it off right there you got your truck what's he driving <laughs> he's in a, a mustang a twin turbo mustang the guy that he was down there with i guess it was his car and he let dave jump in it and drive yeah. it gotcha but i had uh i had a wet road tune up in it because I thought it was going to be sketchy. Yeah. You know, it's November, it's kind of damp, and the highway was completely dry. It hooked real good. So he got out on me about about two cars, and it just pretty much stayed there once my nitrous ramp came in. But it was the best 500 I ever lost. Yeah. yeah. You know? So he beat you, but it was uh, it kind of got you started. It, it definitely got me started. I was like, all right, if, if I can make this happen, if random stuff like this, random good stuff like this keeps happening to me, I better be able to get it at least on film because right this could be some good content you oh know? absolutely because i mean how many people out there wish they in the especially in the street racing world wish they could race yeah. him like i'm getting know? these opportunities out of nowhere and you know i, I better be able to capitalize on it or else right. it'll just w be wasted for sure so i went out the next week and i didn't have no money at the time but i bought like a 200 hundred dollar lenovo laptop to do editing on mm -hmm. and i went and i got a best buy credit card and I bought a bunch of cameras, some drones and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, I just started filming races. And uh, at the time, I didn't really want to start filming myself yet. I wasn't comfortable, like, filming myself behind the camera. Right. But I wanted to highlight some of the more local guys that were doing it, too, because I felt like they weren't getting any spotlight. Like, 1320s out there, and they got, like, all these people they're filming, and they're getting, like, all these... Uh, sponsors because of it and they're getting all this attention but there's guys in ohio doing the same stuff and they ain't getting no attention but nobody film nobody like nobody's capturing out there it. filming it unless it's a cell phone you right know, and it's like a potato quality yeah i'm like there you know we could be we could be doing some nice stuff with this mm -hmm. right so i started racing in columbus um and that's kind of where the but at that point street racing channel was uh, yeah. was a thing yeah we started racing in columbus and i i think i filmed our first cash days here on the west side and uh we raced in the middle of the day on the sun on a sunday <laughs> and no cops came no nothing it was beautiful i won the cash days i think there was like eight cars it was small but that was like my first big win uh on the street 
you know, as far as the cash days goes. And we got it all on footage. It's on my channel. It's like one of the first videos. Yeah. But, you know, it, looking back, the video is terrible compared right. to what quality, I can put out yeah. now. Yeah. It, but it's cool to kind of see those things. We yeah. even have terrible, I mean, quality videos from early on. I mean, yeah. I can remember sitting down and doing videos with cell phones. and. Well, and I remember doing them way back in the day with an iPod. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? The, the clarity was just, you can't Awful. imagine you'd ever put that out now. <laughs> yeah. You know? Now you look at it like, whoa. What <laughs> what we, thinking? we thought it was great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, we thought it was so pumped. good. <laughs> I remember doing the one in the showroom with the, uh, it was on foam on cannon soap or something and we were had to we couldn't figure out how to get music to it and we were freaking doing all this weird stuff and then when we got done we're like oh dude this is and we like this is gonna take us over the top yeah we got it's videos super, now you look yeah. back and you're like cringe oh, yeah it's yeah. terrible that's but, how, yeah, so how you my learn. early videos were that's how you learn though you know you yeah. get better and better at it yep i'm surprised anybody ever watched <laughs> yeah you know, that first video i think it had like i think it's up to almost a hundred thousand views now yeah but I don't know why it ever took off. I mean, I I can't see it. It just I got lucky, I guess. Yeah. Blessed. So you um you just kept you were just going around and started filming racing. Yeah, I just started filming all all the races we were doing and eventually I started filming uh my journey with the truck and started filming some of the family stuff and I think people got really attached to the family thing. Yeah. They felt like they were a part of it, you that's, know. That's the relatable. Big, that's the big part because it gives it gives people an inside view. We talk about it here all the time as far as doing it from like yeah. doing podcasts and doing behind the scenes things. And I've found myself watching your channel, watching different things and seeing, you know, being out plus we know Molly pretty well yeah. too. Like and but seeing the whole as far as the um what you guys are actually up until right before the race still working on the car or, oh, yeah. you know uh people like it because it, what you said it's relatable you know yeah. they, they like to see all the aspects film races but not everybody has content you know behind the scenes that's right like what goes into it you know and that's that, hard to that's hard to recreate that's hard for somebody to just copy and steal off your channel and just repost oh absolutely because they can't but that's what makes people that's what draws keeps them attached it's like man they know that you guys are out there literally in your garage mm -hmm. working on these trucks it's not just somebody doing it and you're showing up to race them yeah like, you know it's the it's the whole part and up until like last year we didn't have a lift or nothing we were doing it on jack stands and we had harbor freight tools how we still got harbor freight tools yeah that's all we got we don't you know we don't have the best stuff i just recently went out and bought a uh tig welder a cheap tig welder but you know, we're doing everything on a budget or, you know, trying to. And just, you know, recently it's started to come around and we're starting to make, you know, enough profit that we can start putting back into the cars. And I'm building another Nova now. Yeah. And for people that don't know, you still race the same truck. Oh, yeah. From same back, truck. Same truck. That's a little different. 15. As far as what's, that. What's that, truck, what's that truck run now? What kind of mile an hour is that truck getting now? <clears throat> on the street, it'll go over 140 miles an hour in the 8th. Back from 114 on a, on a good road. or so, back when you were first yeah. racing it, yeah. Back when, you know, I was on a sticky track, you know, hanging its tongue out, trying to go 590s. Now we're doing that, like, easily on the street. Yeah, and that's what people don't understand is racing on the street is way different than just racing down the track. You look yeah. on a video and you think, oh, they're just going straight to the same deal. But no. it's way, it's a whole different. It's, I mean, you got bumps, you got dust and dirt and potholes and you know, if you're at a cash days where there's a lot of spectators, you got people pulling out on the road, you know, off the ditch and everything, dragging dirt out on the tracks. Yeah. And you got beer bottles and you got cigarettes <laughs> and you yeah. got people waving money and you got spectators you have to look out for. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure there when you got a million people around your truck and you can only see the flagger. You can't see nothing beside you. It's like tunnel vision. Right. So that's the, how do you, uh, so most of these street racing events, do they, do a lot of them get shut down because you guys are just doing it a lot of them do yeah a lot of them do we have to bounce around from spot to spot i'd say it's probably a good amount of work to even find spots to even do it it is there's there's some select people out there that are really really good at putting on street races mm -hmm. and usually if somebody else is putting on one other than these select people we don't even mess with it because there's a certain group of people that they know where to go what time you know they know some of the local police or they they have security they have spotters you know mm -hmm. at the end of the road to make sure no cars are coming or no cops it's a it's a very organized deal mm -hmm. like, yeah we yeah. don't just go out there in the middle of the road 
and run it and just hope nobody comes. Right. You know? Take you take different um steps to to see like Yeah, they're on the scanners. Area. They know when they're coming. Yeah. You know? And to do it safely as you can. You know, you don't like you're saying you don't just pick any road. I mean they're they're picking spots right. that make sense. Yeah. We're out in the industrial areas, you know, late at two or three in the morning, like where there's just semi traffic every once in a while. People aren't coming and going to work, you know? Right. Yeah. And you guys kinda just you you kinda just orchestrate it through your little network. Yeah. I mean, if people were coming to race, like if somebody wanted to, if somebody's listening to this and they wanted to, man, I, they're, th- yeah, they're honestly, big time in the race. most of this stuff happens in private Facebook group pages and mm-hmm. uh, group chats. Yeah. You know, that gets organized that way. How far can you, you know, for example, you'll go, it's the, obviously just not racing just in Columbus, Ohio. You're racing all over. Oh, yeah, all over. So I mean, how far uh, do they plan ahead? Like usually two, three months in advance. Yeah. They plan these things out. What's and what's the biggest one you've ever been to? The biggest one I've ever been to was in Kansas City. Yeah, and uh, I went to. There was two of them. The first one was their first twenty eight twenty eight inch tire race, and it was like three or four years ago. We went, and it was an amazing experience. We went back for the second one, but my truck wasn't there. Yeah, I was just there to film it, and that was the biggest street race in U.S. history. So a, a, an idea like how many cars show up to something there like was, that? There was forty, I think forty six or forty eight cars. Wow! All racing. Uh, they threw three or four hundred dollars in the pot, and everybody races for the pot. And I think they threw in some tires and some other stuff to yeah. the winner. There was like there's like sponsors for these deals, like local shops will throw in stuff. Sure. Yeah. So and is it winner take all? It was winner it? winner take all. Yeah. You know the final two, they get to decide if they want to split. But usually, I mean, it's like 80-20 or 70-30 or something like that. Yeah. That's pretty wild. So you you go out to – let's just use that one for an example. You go out to a street race in Kansas City. You're going all the way from here. And Ten hours. And then – it's already known like where it's going to be what time you have a meet you have a meet location everybody meets up in a parking lot and mm-hmm. they'll do a chip draw what they call a chip draw where you know however many drivers they have that's how many chips they have and you know there's two of each number one's usually red and one's like white so that's like your lane choice mm-hmm. so usually red chip right lane and uh so that you know one to say 26 two ones go together you know so on uh, they'll tell you where your first race location is. And then, you know, if that spot gets busted, they'll say, all right, everybody get in the group chat and we're going to this spot next. Yeah. What, you know, what if you get two or three races off in one spot, but that's it. Now it's, now it's busted. We got to yeah. figure out how to get all 46 of these cars yeah. through to somewhere. another spot without yeah. the cops seeing 40 trailers right. going right. to the next place. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult. I mean, it would I bet, be man. super hard to do. Sometimes you have to leave in groups of two or three you know at the time that way it doesn't look like a big train going to the next spot right and it takes a while and then if they like get on you i'm sure if the cops are like okay we're shutting it down they're just they're on you the rest of the night yeah i'm sure there's that experience luckily in kansas city for that big race we didn't see a cop until almost the very end yeah and this was a two-night race so it started on friday we showed up on friday they did chip draw at midnight and we didn't race until about two in the morning that was their window they wanted to start at two in the morning they're very adamant about that and uh we started first round and we didn't get first round done until seven in the morning and the sun was coming up (laughs) and you know all 46 cars went down and then we went back to our hotels we slept for four or five hours and they said all right we're going to the next spot second round show up to the next spot we got i think third and fourth round second and third round done and the cops showed up one time there and uh we went back to the original spot we started at and we finished it off the cops never showed up to that first spot huh. how'd you do until right at the end did you do pretty good i actually di- didn't go to that one with my truck oh, i was that's, just, okay. filming, it. You're just yeah. filming it so like if a, if a guy loses does he usually just roll out or does he stay around for the, and watch they the rest usually of it stay and watch the rest yeah, of it see who wins it all yeah but that race was crazy we actually showed up on thursday to test we found the road that they were going to race at and the guys i was with were wanting to test so i mean there's guys from thursday to saturday racing on the same spot like yeah we changed a transmission in a uh, parking lot right next to the road like yeah. my buddy broke his turbo 400 and we 
we dropped the transmission out right there in the middle of a parking lot and then put another one in an hour and tested again. Yeah, went back like, down. Well, that's the thing is you, you've you done all this planning. you done all this. It's like a one-time deal. Biggest trick was you do whatever you can to make the run. Oh, yeah. Doesn't I mean, matter. That's the big – everybody wants to, you know, compete. Everybody want if you're there, you're going to make it, you you know, you're going to yeah. drive three hours to get a transmission or you're going to do gonna whatever you got to do. do. Whatever you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. So is it, is it as simple as there's 46 cars, there's 23 races and yeah. 23 of them's done after that first yeah. race? 23 of them. What's, yeah. what's the stipulations for the cars? Like what are the, how do you even, how do you even the playing field? <laughs> that race and most of the racing we do is uh, 28, 10, 5 tire size. So 28 inches tall, 10 and a half inches wide. Uh, no cubic know, inch or qu- like limitations? Nothing. Just steel roof and quarters usually. Yeah. Um, no pro mods, you know, no rail cars. You got to have doors. Right? Yeah. But that's basically it. That's basically just the tire size and anything above 28, 10, 5, or what some people do is 29 and a half, 10, 5. We don't really mess with that, but some people out west do. Yeah. Uh, if anything bigger than that is just considered a big tire. And then they race each other. So when you say it's a small tire, no prep race. Yeah. Explain it. We, you, you did the small tire part. What's the no prep mean? A lot of people have different versions of no prep. So there's some people that want to race on a track that just hasn't been touched, you know, since the last event. There's some people that want to make the track worse. They want to scrape all the rubber off, mm-hmm. which is basically not no prep. You're still prepping it, but you're making yeah. it worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and then there's some people that go as far as to wash all the glue off with soap and water Mm -hmm. just to try and make it even worse than that. And then there's some no preps where they race the track backwards. They race from the the track. They race from the shutdown back on the, on like the worst surface they can find, you know, at the track, which simulates the street. And then obviously if it's actually in the street, it's no prep because it's just the street. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some people that prep the street yeah it's all different yeah like some people go out there like we've been to new orleans and uh you know obviously there's a lot of rubber down there at the pad there's a there's a little strip they call the pad down in new orleans and uh there's glue and you know right. prep everywhere like it's it's almost like a track for the first 60 feet hmm. but i mean every spot's different yeah every culture is different sure. everybody does everything a little bit different depending on where you're at yeah, but it's but it is. You, everybody starts the same time. There's no bracket. Yeah, it's, it's heads up. That's heads what I. Up. That's what I think is cool about off it. Of you a know? flashlight start. Yeah, and finish then, line judge with a camera. Then finish line's eighth mile. Yep, eighth mile. Yeah. So you got the camera there. So there's no guessing. This yeah. is you know we. There's always some discrepancies on close races if somebody's out there with an Android, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you never but know. As long it, as they just got looks that iPhone, yeah. iPhone 12, <laughs> you know, 120 frames per second, please. Yeah, <laughs> you got to because I imagine a lot of these races are super tight. So, yeah. and and if you're talking about the kind of money you're talking about, we it has to be right. Oh, it has to be. There can't be a, oh, I think I won, or yeah. I think this person won. It's the, gotta people, the people putting on these races have a lot of pressure on them. Sure they do. Absolutely. And the uh, no spectators. Yeah, we try to keep that to a minimum. Yeah. You know, we're not out there blasting that we're going to be somewhere, you know. If spectators show up, it's usually just because they're local and they kind of know that it's got, something's going down. Like at New right. Orleans, it's a different world down there. Like, they're out there every night. It don't matter if it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like the weekends, they're out there every night racing. racing. So spectators kind of know. Yeah, they're just, you know. Yeah. There is certain weekends where like out of town cars will come in and uh, we'll try to keep it pretty quiet. You know, somebody might throw out a feeler post or try to throw people off like, hey, we're racing on Saturday and then we're out there Sunday morning. Right. Or we're racing Friday and we're actually out there Saturday. Yeah. Is there any car out there or cars that you've been in a race and like that's that's the baddest one I've ever seen? Uh I'd have to say the fastest car I've ever raced is probably Kendall Gowen. He's uh very easily the most consistent, fastest car. Um what kind of car is it? It's a Fox body Mustang with a big block Chevy on a lot of nitrous. Yeah. Yeah. But we run him, and he got us by, like, a fender. We raced him, like, a month ago. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, everybody we race has the power. Right. It's just a matter of putting the 
putting the traction down getting it down the track right I mean, everybody it seems like nowadays has 1500 2000 horsepower they just got to know how to use it yep yeah that's um if someone wanted to come watch your race you guys do have some events that are track events correct yeah yeah we do have some events that we go to you know a lot of probably half and half we do a lot of street racing but we do a lot of track stuff too it's usually no prep we don't usually mess on mess with the sticky stuff yeah but uh you know we try to post like a week in advance where we're going to be at yeah yeah and people can kind of follow you on the street racing channel yeah. and youtube we, yeah that's that's what's interesting to me too is the whole street racing channel you at some point you just started getting bigger and bigger and you thought i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out a way to monetize this try to yeah and and you started selling apparel was that the first thing you did the first thing i did was started the youtube channel mm -hmm. and i didn't even know you could make money on youtube at the time yeah, yeah. I just got a. I got an email one day saying your channel is monetized, and I'm like, "What is this? Yeah, what's this mean? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. I just wanted to sell T-shirts, you know. Yeah. And then uh, I did start selling T-shirts. I came up with a logo. I I sketched it out on a piece of paper and gave it to my brother, and he took it to his like Photoshop class in school. And I was like, "Can you make this?" And he made it for me, and that's the one I've used ever since. That yeah. first revision. Yeah, the first one. Like you asked, it worked. It just worked. Yeah. And. uh yeah, I put it, put it on a t-shirt and that was it. And you know, I started selling t-shirts. People locally wanted to support it and uh it just grew. It just grew like crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. And the uh, um now I we always I always see people at car shows even events and they have a street racing channel shirt on. I see it everywhere. It's Me tough too. for us to just go into Jags and buy parts without like getting bombarded it's like yeah. weird because i don't get it i don't see myself as somebody like special right but these other other people they feel like they know us oh yeah because they you follow the in. channel yeah you let them in they the feel channel. like they're part of the family almost yeah. that's I know. a cool thing and, and that, that's what it's all about because they sit there and watch so they're like when they do see you like oh man you and your dad or whatever you know yeah. they did you ever get that motor change why we'll, we'll have yeah. people ask us totally different it'll be something we talked about on here and, and they'll say something and just in passing, I'm like, how do they even know that? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, the podcast or whatever it is. So there's people that are knowing uh, your aggravations with the motor oh, or yeah. whatever you've got going on, you know? They'll be thinking about stuff that we forgot about. Like, we go like, oh, yeah, we did do that. And we posted that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, if people wanted to, if people want to get your apparel they just go to streetracingchannel.com streetracingchannel.com yeah we just set up a new shipping and receiving area out at the old shop and uh my brother's out there every day doing orders that's nice. cool yeah so, yeah that's cool very, very fortunate very thankful for all the support for yeah. sure and lots of jack's wax in the garage yeah yeah <laughs> we, we were using some jack's wax yesterday we got molly's car running and she was I out there that. using the, the they, she just got a new motor yep right 408 yeah or 410 that thing looked bad the bone it's got some purple on it stuff yeah stick shift car yeah what's ever gonna happen if she beats you that's never gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just never think about she, it she's not gonna it's, get it's as never, quite good of a motor as what you've got that's right and he's always the one working on him so it's never <laughs> happened <laughs> yeah, exactly. i can kind of limit her back you know, yeah turn it down a little bit she don't know yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah they, we um we have what we call at some of these events uh, street madness at at our stores mm -hmm. and uh it's a cool thing we want to have one here mm -hmm. we'd like we'd love for you to be a part of it too uh if we can ever get the restrictions taken off which i think will happen this year but we want to have these street madness but we have them at each store we want to have one here at the uh at the shop back in the day it's changed now at the airport tower my dad and all his there's a bunch of street racing mm -hmm. that would happen right here on 17th, right here on 17th. Avenue. just because it's part i mean it's dead straight i mean it was the the uh quarter mile was painted it was marked off you know that's awesome and we would come here at the shop it'd be late at night and there'd be you know there's all these industrial buildings over here that you kind of park in a parking lot and nothing nothing's going on and really all you have to deal with is airport police and they don't even they're not messing with it yeah and uh then they built that new tower and it, they're, they're just nothing now anymore. Yeah. You'll, you'll maybe see some bikes out here. I like remember. A couple passes. I remember coming out here when I was sixteen or seventeen and watching some people race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I've actually parked in that parking lot. Yep. right in front of the building. Yeah, <laughs> and it was it was a big thing for a while, and then it just you know just got shut down so quick because we're right here by the airport, and you know yeah. they just they just shut and it down. And that new the new airport tower you can see right. Oh yeah, you, you can, can see, see right everything. over here. So they were like shutting it down. I saw you know. Last year, sometime I saw some bikes out here. Like I said, they'll make two or three quick passes, and that's it. That's all they had time for, and they yeah. gotta go. 
it's really hard to do any street racing out here locally anymore. We have to travel. Yeah. They're just, they're just getting so tough on it. Yeah. You know, I wish it wasn't that way, but I understand. You know, there's a lot of a lot of young kids out there with what I call ricers, and they yeah. go out and do burnouts and donuts in parking lots, and they leave trash, and that's what really ruins it for the real racers. <laughs> right, and you know, from the from the cops point of view it's like they don't know it, somebody could be having a street race and it could just be totally not ran right and be yeah. you know dangerous well, whatever yeah. if sure so it's like it's, it's like one person runs it for everybody yeah you know so you get you get some some bad races that are not um ran like your guys are right and it, and people aren't using spotters they aren't they don't right. have anybody watching to see if anybody's coming yeah they're just kind of like stopping it and now i've seen these things where people are they're just like shutting down highways doing burnouts yeah like they're, like trying to they're stop literally it doing donuts in the middle of the freeway yeah <laughs> it's like what's that's the point what ruins it like, i know they're doing that stuff in atlanta and it ruined the street racing down there yeah pretty much we uh we've been doing these street madnesses at the other places the reason we can't do one here is because we have to pay we have to have the uh because it's a state road or a county road yeah you have to, we have to get a block party permit which so we can shut the road down yeah and, Which uh, is not a real hard thing, no. but they've shut. They've not allowed to have any during COVID. They've yeah. shut it down. They, so well, we could have one for ten people or less. <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be real. That's fun. a little tough. Yeah. <laughs> so I would assume that those restrictions are gonna are gonna you know, go away here sometime this year. But yeah, that's why we had to cancel our car show last year and the whole thing because we have to shut the street down. We don't have a big enough parking lot to have yeah. as many cars that, that would normally come here. So. Uh, we rent out the airport lot, uh, and even that's a thing. You know, they're not just that's renting a big, that out. Big car meet, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a bunch of all kinds of cars, race cars to motorcycles, to trucks. Um, just a big night. We have a DJ and stuff that comes out. Food trucks. That'd, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'll definitely come out to that. Yeah, we'll definitely. Uh, whenever we get a date set, I'll shoot you all the info and get it kind of. Definitely get, be let there. You guys Hopefully, out. my brother's Obviously. trucks running. We can take like three or four cars yeah that'd be awesome it was we were talking earlier we talked about racing and how you got to be careful with the spots you pick and even the people you race you know mm -hmm. like you're not just you're if if someone wanted, just want to race anybody you, know, you can't that's why i get a lot of messages like hey let's race you know i want to i want to run you i want to run the truck i think i can run you over and it's like yeah you might run me over like because literally you race run nobody me. Yeah. go race somebody else first you know yeah. what i mean you might literally run me over <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah there's guys out there that'll just do it for fame and that's not what we do it for no. yeah you know? we do it because we love it right. there's a lot of people that want to race and they want to take something from it they want to take from our culture yeah like with street outlaws street outlaws is great because it it created uh, a huge fan base for what we're doing it's probably helped me quite a bit because it's put more awareness on the whole street racing thing. But at the same time, it can be bad too, because you got a lot of these racers that have never street raced before, uh, never intended to street race and probably talk bad about it before. Right. But because it's on TV, they want to get an opportunity to be on there because they want yeah. their shop to be promoted or they want something yeah. and every, to take from it. And know? everybody, when they see it, everybody's the, oh, I'd, I'd beat him. Yeah. I'd beat him. So now they want to automatically go to racing that person as where it's, like you said, it's. Yeah, I don't want to race guys like that. I want to race people that have been doing it for yeah. a long time that have experience. I don't want to race some bracket guy that just it's put almost, a 200 shot on a 632. Yeah. And it's almost like you got to go, you got to go through the, uh, progression. Yeah. You got to earn it to get up there to really, Absolutely. to really race. And you can't just jump right into it. Yeah. Imagine if you, if everything, if you took on every person that wanted to race you, it's like, yeah, I'll just race anybody that comes up. I mean, I would get in an accident. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very selective. I want to race the best. You know, I want to race people that are out there testing all the time that have their shit together. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, to, I would be the same way. For your safety alone. I mean, hell, you have to. What's your? So you said you got a Nova 71? Yeah, I just bought a Nova. It was actually a local car around here. Patrick Barnhill raced it for a long time. And um, it's a 25-2 tube chassis, but it still has all the factory frame rails. So yeah. it's pretty much legal for whatever I want to do. Um, but it's a lot safer. It's got the funny car cage, double frame rail. Sure. And uh, I'm putting a big block Chevy in it with twins. Yep. And it can fit a big tire or a small tire. Oh, so, so I you can, can do both. Be able to do whatever. Yeah. What color is it? Right now it's primer and black. 
yeah. so it's like a mixture <laughs> yeah but, I'm trying to think of what kind of paint on we can get some products on there get, make yeah, you, yeah. yeah. I, I that wax on it, you go at least a tenth faster yeah <laughs> i want to put i want to put some gold paint on it with a black vinyl on top oh that'd be cool oh that'd be slick like a factory gold kind of like the uh i seen you've been doing the uh the rc car. the rc cars yeah kind i made of like an rc one. car just like that yeah those things look pretty slick they're fun you we've guys have had some cash days at those yeah i've been doing like, i've seen a bunch of people winter, we've showing been up bored at, yeah so we've just been doing cash days in little parking garages i've seen them we had like 26 cars raced for like 600 dollars. yeah well, or remote control car it's a, but it, they're freaking fast yeah. dude we were racing in etna the other day and we had like 30 cars dudes come from michigan yeah there's people getting into it i when, when you posted it it reminded me because we i used to race when i was younger circle track motor control cars yeah. but those like slot cars and there's the regular i mean they're <laughs> into it yeah like people this guy came from michigan and he had just been to vegas racing for 20 grand these rc cars wow it's yeah. nuts and that's due a lot to street outlaws the whole no prep RC thing, that's all people that watch Street Outlaws. They they love it, but they can't afford to do it. They get these RC cars and they, you know, they go out and have fun with them. Yeah. You guys, have, I've seen some, you guys had some big ones yourself at yeah. some of these uh, garages. We we had the cops show up to one and they showed up like hot and heavy because somebody called about a street race, right? <laughs> and we're in this parking lot. The cops show up and they're like lights, lights on and everything. And they show up, they get out and they're like, they look around. They said, we got a call about a street race. And we, I hold up one of the cars. <laughs> they come like, out with like a little, re- me. little remote control police car yeah. and pull you over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get on the paddy wagon, sir. <laughs> yeah. they, they came out and they were like, you got to be shitting me. They, they ended up calling. We're, we're like behind an industrial warehouse. And they called up. They called the security, and they were like, "You called about a street race? Are you serious?" And they're, they're like, "Well, we we can't have this because that's a liability if somebody gets hurt in our parking lot." And we're like, "Are you oh serious? Gosh. We can't do anything fun, man." Yeah, like, dude, we're racing road control cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's somebody going to get an ankle? <laughs> and we're literally getting chased out. We we're, we're doing the same stuff on like as a real street race we're getting kicked out of these places and trying to find the next spot to go to <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous you got private rc facebook groups yeah for, it for is rc races it's, it's insane that is crazy <laughs> it, is there uh is there events coming up that you can talk about or do you have some stuff planned i mean how often are you racing is every it? weekend every uh, weekend this weekend we're going to muncie indiana for what they call the big end banger mm-hmm. and they run that track uh they run the shutdown so long you can run from the quarter into the shutdown and still have room to stop and it's like blacktop instead Mm -hmm. of it it doesn't have a lot of rubber on it so it's like no prep yeah but we're racing there on friday um and then friday two days from now yep and so so what's an event like that what's the pay uh, if you was the win what's the payout for that event that one is smaller it's one of the like more local events so i think it's like a hundred dollar buy-in but they've had up to like 60 cars before oh nice so it could be like six grand yeah six seven grand nice little weekend if you can yeah and it's only a couple hour drive yeah so ain't bad we we just got back from dig or die and it was uh forty thousand to win oh nice where's that at that was in north carolina yeah and there's another one coming up uh i can't remember the date of it i'll have to put it in the comments but dig or die a hundred thousand dollar to win uh i think it's in july Hmm. that's a lot of bread that one that'd be a cool one to go to yeah, help me get my Nova done a little bit faster if I yeah. want that one. <laughs> we'll get you some wax on it and definitely make it yeah. go faster. There we go. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, I wanted to see. We've always got some. Uh, hopefully, we can, in April 17th in Vegas, we've got our street madness yep. uh, that we're going to have. You'll be out there for that. Yep, April 17th. It's going to be a big one. Already getting some traction on it. Yep. And uh, the we got Vegas some- store. Yeah, Vegas uh, Jack's Wax store. I didn't know you guys had one in Vegas. Yeah, we just opened it. it. Just opened it less than That's a month awesome. ago. Yeah, it's pretty slick. We uh, it's been doing really well. We're having our first Street Madness out there um, on the seventeenth. It's going to be big. We got a big parking lot though, so it'll it'll hold a lot of cars. It's like we have we have these stores all over. It's like eight of them, mm-hmm. and the parking lot matters when you're selecting the area. You know, because the Street Madness, we the guys down in North Carolina have Street Madness events that are a thousand cars. Wow. I mean, it's nuts, dude. Yeah. And uh, they, I mean, they don't have the parking lot for it. So people are now in adjacent parking lots, other right. businesses, all this different stuff. So uh, in in 
Vegas, it'll work good because it's a huge parking lot. But it's always it, they're cool events because they're at night always. So nice. like eight to ten thirty, and we have some. I hate being out there in the heat of the day. Oh, staring yeah. around. And uh, some of these night are, is where it's at. Some people won't come to the ones that are real early. Yeah. You know, if they're eight o'clock in the morning, people are like, I'm just, I'm not getting up. They're getting up at six, six thirty just to be able to come to the show. Like, especially in Vegas when it gets really hot out there, you're not, you're not having an event at noon. Yeah, or we figured out at a lot of our events that we were doing at tracks, like you get about half the spectators if you do it at noon. Yeah, rather than doing it like eight or nine at night. Yeah, yeah. The night, the night things are. We're going to see how it goes. This is our first one there, but it's uh, the night ones at in north carolina are just massive oh yeah massive huge have you ever been to sema no i want to go once it's really cool man I yeah mean, they're supposed to have it this year I, there's all indicators that it's going to happen and uh, we always have a booth out there and now with the vegas store it'd be a cool year for you to make it with the vegas store we're going to have an event at that store during sema with all nice. the other store owners and stuff like that but you've got to experience sema at least once it's just yeah i've been to pri but that's probably nothing similar. Yeah, well, they, a lot of people do compare them, but more PRI is a lot smaller, but it's it's geared towards racing. your to right. racing as to where, man, SEMA is just it's a, it's everything. anything from anywhere, really. I mean, yeah, anything you would ever want. It's not want. just racing. No, it's, it's probably just, trucks and oh, dude, it's everything. wheels. If it's and, automotive, it's, yeah. it's there. I mean, I mean manufacturers, you, car care companies like uh, upholstery. I mean, just, I'm talking about like the, the actual the people that make the leather that you would, I mean, just every single thing you could think about in you, a car. You could go there for, as a spectator, mm-hmm. for three, four days and probably not see it all. It's massive. That's wild. It's massive. Yeah, yeah. I got to go. Molly's been wanting to go. She really, yeah. you guys need to pull the trigger on it because, uh, Man, it's an experience. The the weather out there that time of year is absolutely picture perfect. It's like 75 and sunny every single day. There's all kinds of outside uh, tents. It's like cool companies that are outside and you go inside. I mean, I there's can't say big, enough about it. Big drift track. Yeah. You know, there's, really? all, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Haul your truck out there and maybe you could come up with a little street race. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's Fine. a hell of a drive. <laughs> it's, it's a big one. We had a guy here, the booth, uh, the car that we had in our booth, not last year because it was canceled, but the year before, is a local guy, and he drove it all the way out there for us, which was super nice of him, and an absolutely beautiful car, but, I mean, he took his RV. He made a trip of it. You know, he made it yeah, his I'd wife. I'd have to and, probably take, like, a week to get that. He did. <laughs> he did. I think he did. He went out, and then they stayed at a, at a big, at a nice campground, and they just kind of hung out and came to see him a couple days and mm-hmm. be a cool cool thing to go out and vlog though every day oh dude. man for sure you People guys definitely have to come out um if they have it this year to come out i think we'll we'll have some passes yeah we can hook up with the passes for sure so you'll be able to get in you know it's just a matter of making the time to get out there but it's yeah. uh it's just a quick flight dude nothing but a thing it's uh yeah. it's something you have to experience in the in the world that you live in you you, you, you got to check it out definitely it definitely it would be really cool for you to uh video and oh, the whole yeah. thing you know meeting the, different people out yeah. there and we're gonna we're gonna try to orchestrate a street madness event at our store during that time so it'll be it'll be a fun time yeah it'd be really good new products friday yep two more days man we got two new products that we're gonna drop on friday uh we you've been putting some teasers out there yep the stores all the stores will have them in stock so the same release when we release them online and uh, we got some videos that we're finishing up. You should be editing those today. And mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna rock it out. Yeah. So stay tuned to that, Billy. We appreciate you coming down, man. No problem, man. Thanks for having Absolutely, me. Absolutely. Yeah. Really appreciate, appreciate you guys. Thanks, bro. Later.